Well, hello, wellness warriors. The word of the day, misinformation. So we are all confused. And the reason I'm saying that is that we want to know what diet actually works. And the question is, what do we ask what diet actually works? What are we really asking? Like works for what? And I think part of the problem that we have is that we are all trying to use a diet to lose weight. And having this goal of a diet that's focused on losing weight is creating all kinds of chaos for most of us. And part of the problem is that wanting to be thin and wanting food to cause us to be thin then makes us in the position where we're not actually remembering what food is supposed to be for. Food is supposed to be there to fuel and um, build us, right? Like that's the purpose of food. So, you know, I want to start this week with the comment of the week, which is coming from Garbage Man. Um, if you'd like to be featured in the comment of the week, you just need to comment on my Saturday video. So I'm going to pull out a few lines out of Garbage Man's uh, comment because it was really long. But the part I want to point out is that he says, um, there is a variety of foods you can eat on keto, both plants and meats. And he says, in the end, we have to do a better job of explaining what makes a keto diet, which is ketosis, and what and what that has to do with losing weight, right? And I feel like the interesting thing here is that he's pointing us back to this very interesting idea that if we don't understand what we're trying to accomplish, so being in ketosis, then we will struggle to have success in doing a keto diet. But the same thing is true of if I don't understand what my diet is supposed to do for me, fuel and give me the building blocks to build this, then I'm going to struggle in trying to use to use my diet correctly, right, to build a healthy body. And what's frustrating is that if we're asking what diet is best, you're kind of already on that wrong path, right? Um, you know, if any of us were to go online and search, what's the best diet for an elephant? we're going to find out that that diet is roots, grasses, fruit, and bark. If we go on the internet and we search, what's the best diet for a lion? We're going to find out that lions eat medium-sized hoofed animals, and occasionally they will eat larger, sick, or injured animals. So we know precisely what elephants, lions, and as a matter of fact, a good number almost all the animals on the planet, we know what they eat, including humans. We, we know what humans eat, right? Humans do best with protein and a side of veg. And at some point in our, in our evolution, we found the ability to cook our protein, and then we found the ability to spice our foods and we, and any, as a matter of fact, cook and spice our veg too. We found ways of making food, so our energy and our building blocks, more palatable. And all of a sudden, we turned what we were doing that was to keep our bodies healthy into something we were doing for fun. Now, I'm not exactly sure when that happened, but I know that it was the beginning of our vulnerability. Because now we have processed foods. And these processed foods damage our health. Instead of when we eat whole foods, those prolong our life. Somehow we keep treating processed foods and whole foods as if they're equivalent. Wellness warriors, I need you all to understand that they're not equivalent. They're nowhere close to being equivalent. They are so far apart on the spectrum of what's healthy. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we keep chasing taste. And we need to stop doing that, please. We need to stop doing that. Because when we chase taste, 
we're prioritizing a flavor. I need every one of you to prioritize health over taste. Because when we do that, we'll eat the foods that help our body to be strong. We'll eat the foods that allow us to repair internal. So it's such a, a frustrating thing when I see people trying to find recipes so that they can bring foods back into their diet that made them unhealthy. But this comes about because we're chasing flavors and tastes and fun foods rather than eating the thing that's going to help our body to be strong. Um, when we prioritize health, one of the things that we're going to focus on is getting enough protein and getting enough fat to fuel our bodies and to build our bodies. Because in fact, fat and protein are what we need to build us. And we don't need carbohydrates. So we don't need to eat carbohydrates to build us. And I think as soon as we start to understand that, things look very different. Because when we know that we can create our own carbohydrates, like every person has that ability, it's called gluconeogenesis. Our body can make carbohydrates. And as soon as we know that our body can do that, then all of a sudden, again, we don't have to chase these, these fun foods that we want to have on the plate. So what would happen if we just go back to eating what our ancestors ate, which would be meat, fish, eggs, and supplement vegetation when we can't get meat, fish, eggs? What would happen? We would be actually eating the diet that works works best, right? So what diet is the best diet for humans? The diet that we've always eaten, meat, fish, eggs, protein sources, with the fat that comes along with those protein sources, and vegetation, if we can't get access to meat, fish, eggs, or as a side dish for fun. Um, wellness Warriors, I'm always so happy that you come back and everybody who's new, subscribe and ring the bell so you can get on the road to health. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Mondays and I really can't wait to talk to you guys again next week.